right, hello everyone and welcome to the August 2021 virtual field trip to the Rookery. My name is Michelle Brocious. I'm your BirdWalk leader tonight. I am a WCAS board member and field trip co-coordinator. Uh, just a little bit about these virtual field trips if you've never attended before. Uh, so every month I select a location for participants to visit independently or with their family and friends to explore the location, take photographs, identify uh, a bird species list, um, write some journaling, and submit those items to me that I compile into a scrapbook. And it's organized by, by person, by participant, so each person gets their own section of slides with their submission. Uh, so it, it's a lot of fun to see you know, how everyone experiences the park differently and the different birds that everyone sees throughout the month. And then, of course, the call for the month takes place the following month, so for August, we're now into September, to give me time to compile uh, the submissions and present it to you this evening. All right. All right, so this uh, location was the Rookery. Uh, this 562-acre park features the Chagrin River, the old interurban railroad jun junction, and one of Geauga County's nesting colonies of Great Blue Heron. Two trails total 1.4 miles. Children can have fun in a play area here. Uh, and that's from the Geauga Park District website, the Rookery page. Um, also located in an old glacial lake bed, much of this land is considered wetland. Open marshes and swamp forests enhanced by the work of beavers are found, as are several abandoned oxbows of the original channel of the Chagrin River. The property surrounding the silo picnic area is brushland. A beech maple forest and several red maple stands provide habitat for a variety of animals, including songbirds such as wood thrush and veery. A large forested preserve protects cold water habitat for a threatened species of native brook trout introduced by the Ohio Department of Natural Resources Division of Wildlife. Great Blue Herons, Great Blue Herons rest in treetop colonies of a few to several hundred nests. Uh, the isolated colony at the Brookery has been in existence for more than 60 years and has had more than 150 active nests. Since herons are apt to abandon eggs or young if disturbed, the heron Brookery itself is accessible only during natural sled program. And that is, again, the Geauga Park District uh, website, the Rookery page. And it's the same uh, website as listed above, but there's a habitat tile that you click on and a pop-up comes up with the information that I just read to you. All right, so target species is the Eastern Phoebe. Uh, I, I, I realize that the rookery is named for the great blue heron, but you know, as I just mentioned on the previous slide, uh, the actual rookery a section of the rookery is off limits, so I, I did not want to make the target species the great blue heron and send you all illegally looking for the rookery. So the Eastern Phoebe is the target species that I chose for us all to seek out. Um, one of our most familiar Eastern flycatchers, the Eastern Phoebe's raspy Phoebe call, is a frequent sound around yards and farms in spring and summer. These brown and white songbirds sit upright and wag their tails from prominent low perches. They typically place their mud and grass nests in protected nooks on bridges, barns, and houses which adds to the species' familiarity to humans. Hardy birds, eastern phoebes winter farther north than most other flycatchers and are one of the earliest returning migrants in spring. And that is from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology Eastern Phoebe page. And on the right-hand side there, beautiful picture of an eastern phoebe at the rookery by Sean Missig. All right, so I'm the first one up. Uh, I visited the rookery on August 21st and 28th and sighted a total of 26 species across the two trips. On my first visit, I arrived at 9.46 a.m. and birded for two hours. Temps started out at a lovely 73 degrees Fahrenheit and would rise to 80 by the end of my visit. I was happy to run into Tom Fishburne in the parking lot who gave me a tip that a green heron, that a green heron was over by the wetland area of the park. Unfortunately, the bird will have cleared out before I made my way over there. I started with the connector trail from the parking lot to the interurban trail that runs the path of part of the historic electric interurban railway. There is an old silo on the way to the interurban trail. So I thought the silo was really neat, so I took a picture of it. Um, and then a picture of the Cleveland and Eastern Interurban Trail sign uh, when you finally make your way over there. 
I just passed the silo, I saw a fluttering in the shrubs. I could hear the click clack of hiking poles on the paved trail behind me, so I knew I didn't have much time. However, I still managed to capture this somewhat fuzzy photo for ID purposes before the hiker scared off the bird. I have found, as a relatively new birder, it helps to have an image to go back and ID later, especially if the bird doesn't stick around for very long. Turns out I had sighted an American Red Start. And let me just say that this bird has had a few different identities <laughs> before I finally settled on American Red Star. When I first saw it, um, it was very brief, and I happened to see yellow on the tail, so I thought that it was a yellow rump warbler. Uh, so you'll see in the next paragraph, I ran into Sean, and I told him, there's a yellow rump warbler. It's a little early, but go look for it. And it turns out, Sean, I sent you on a wild goose chase because it wasn't. <laughs> Um, and then I thought it was a blue-headed vireo because of that striking white eye ring, but then I, I ran it through Merlin, and it turns out American Red Star, and I looked, and, and it definitely could be, especially with that yellow on the back tail feather right here. So I'm sticking with American Red Star. If any of you want to argue with me about that, I, I'll change it, <laughs> but I think that's what the bird is. All right. Oh, Nancy's giving me a thumbs up. Thank you, Nancy. All right, I turned onto the interurban trail and marveled at how the trail looked like a tunnel through the trees. Along this stretch that passes the marsh, I saw Sean Missig. I also sighted American goldfinch, black capped chickadee, northern cardinal, eastern wood peewee, and a painted turtle along the interurban trail. All right, so here's uh, a photo of the, the tunnel through the trees. Um, Tom Fishburne actually took a much better picture of this. Um, phenomena um, than I did, but you can kind of see at the very, at the very center there, it does kind of look tunnelish. Um, and then on the left hand side, on the right hand side, an American goldfinch high up in the trees at the rookery. All right, so I have here a picture of the painted turtle that I saw on the left, and then black capped chickadee on the right with a uh, seed or, or something in its beak at the rookery. And then Northern Cardinal on the left and Easter with Peewee on the right at the rookery. Something weird's going on with my free conference call. Can you all still hear me? Okay, good. Thank you. All right. So next I decided to check out the Woodcock Trail. Here is where I sighted two cedar waxwings perched high up in a dead tree at the observation deck. However, I mainly focused on dragonflies on this trail as there were many that were stopping to perch on the wildflowers. In all, I sighted 13 bird species on this visit. So here I have a photo of the autumn meadow hawk at the rookery. And then two more pictures of meadow hawks, the autumn one on the left, and then I'm not sure exactly uh, which meadowhawk on the right at the rookery. Right, on August 28th, I returned to the rookery with my Uncle Bob, longtime birder, as I was frustrated by the lack of birds on my first visit and so recruited his help. I hadn't spotted the target species on my previous visit and told him he was on a mission to find a Phoebe for me. I knew they were there as I had heard there had been a nest on the covered bridge along the interurban trail. We arrived at the park at 9.07 a.m. and birded for two hours and 45 minutes. The temperature had already reached 77 degrees and would rise to a balmy 85 by the end of our visit. Well, my uncle has a degree in botany from Miami University, so he often drew my attention to the plant life within the park, including this arrow leaf to your thumb in the Persicaria genus. So what I really liked about this picture that I took um, is the little drop of dew that I didn't even notice until I had brought it home and had it up on my computer. I thought that was, that was pretty neat. Uh, we decided to take the interurban trail first, as I had done on my previous visit, and my decision to recruit my uncle quickly paid off as he spotted a young belted kingfisher out on the marsh that I would have completely missed. Also along the stretch by the marsh were red-winged blackbirds and three indigo bunting. We identified the indigo bunting by their calls as they were high up in the trees, but we had a juvenile calling to its parents, and then the mated pair were occasionally calling nearby. An Easterwood peewee and great blue heron were also sighted across the marsh, 
along with five mallards. There was also an interesting looking wasp nest just beyond the marsh along the trail. And I just wanted to point out an ID tip. We can tell this Delta Kingfisher is a juvenile because the breast band is brown. In an adult, the breast band is bluish gray. And I actually want to open it up for a quick discussion right here. There's something I've been trying to figure out. I've been Googling and I haven't come across an answer. Um, usually like the, the a Delta Kingfisher with just a breast band is male and then the female has an additional like belly band and this on this one I don't see a belly band uh, but there is a little brown right here on the side under the wing like where a belly band would start and being that this is young is this do, do the males sometimes have brown right here or is this a female that has yet to develop or grow out of a belly band so I don't know if anybody knows the answer to this, but and I was looking and all the pictures of males I saw did not have any brown right here, so I'm really confused. It's interesting because I never thought about that before myself. Um, but uh, Sean sent a message. Did you see it? Did you, are you recording? Yes. It, it, when I came back in, it said that I was still recording and the record button is I believe, I believe I'm recording. <laughs> It's hard to tell. This is not the best application. Did you all hear a message that recording had stopped? I didn't hear one that said it had stopped at all. Okay. I was just I'm, checking just because. Thank you. No, I appreciate that. Second. But now I'm really concerned. How do I tell? I don't, I, there's no way that I can tell. There's not like a red button anywhere or anything. There never was. Hovering over it, nothing's happening. All right. Well, you know, if it's not recording, I'll just like redo this on my own. <laughs> I'm afraid to stop it. Well, maybe if I stop it, she can hold on. Let me just click the button. Okay. It's recording. Um, okay. Hopefully she can splice the two together. <laughs> um, I, opened up, I opened up my field guide. And because uh, I never thought about this, this is pretty fascinating. Uh -huh. What you're pointing out to, to me, um, but yeah, it mentions that um, the juvenile is like that. The, the little spots that you're seeing there too, the juveniles have quite a bit of brown spots along the side going down in my my guide. But it okay. doesn't indicate whether it's a female or male or not, just a juvenile. Um, so it's uh, uh, pretty interesting. Yeah, I, I guess my guess would be a male, and maybe that, that brown on the side under the wing will kind of clear up as it ages, um, but I wanted to, maybe when um, Nancy Howell returns, maybe at the end we can go back and see if she has any insight. Okay. Yeah, I would, my guess would be it would actually be a female because it's got that oh. extra brown at the bottom. Right, okay. Yeah, so we don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I, you know, it, it's not conclusive. Right. I mean, my might. Even my siblings, you know, they only show so much. <laughs> right. But, All right. Um, so I'll I'll continue and um, maybe when Nancy comes back, maybe at the end of the, the call, we can circle back and see if she has any insight. All right. Oh, and here are two additional um, pictures of that belted kingfisher at the rookery. And here are photos of the red-winged blackbirds, a male on the top there and a female below. And then eastern wood peewee on the left and that wasp nest on the right. I thought that wasp nest had a really interesting pattern on it. So I took that picture. All right, so we made our way to a covered bridge where I had heard there was an eastern Phoebe nest. I didn't find the nest, which would have been empty at this point of the season anyway, but that's because I was distracted um, by the eastern Phoebes flying around and perching over the river. So the covered bridge there on the left and the eastern Phoebe on the right. And 
And two more photos of the eastern phoebe at the rookery. The picture on the left is getting at something under its wing and then um, has its wings folded back down and just looking to the left in the other picture. All right, we continued on to the junction of the historic Cleveland and Eastern Railway, which is where three sections of the interurban met. Uh, according to a signage at the site, one branched into downtown Cleveland, another branched north to Chardon, and then the third branch to Middlefield. The junction is now memorialized with the structure pictured here, the roof design being a replica of the original station. Uh, just behind the junction is another view of the marsh, where we were delighted to count nine wood duck. Uh, we continued to the very end of the interurban trail, during which we were excited to see a red-eyed vireo and a hairy woodpecker. Uh, we also saw Eastern American jack-o'-lantern, a type of fungus, a beautiful shell fungus on a tree, and a dead tree that reminded me of a great blue heron. So a photo of the junction at the rookery um, there, which has uh, a lot of nice information on each side um, of that center pillar. And here are the wood dock at the rookery. Then more wood duck on the left, and then that Eastern American jack-o'-lantern on the right. Nice bright orange, uh, beautifully festive for the fall. I know this was August, but we're kind of getting the fall now. Um, and then a shelf fungus on the left, and that's just what I call it. I don't know if that's a technical term, but it's like a shelf. Um, and then that great blue heron-like dead tree on the right. I don't know if you can all see it. Here's the neck, the eye, the beak. <laughs> I just had to take that picture. And Nancy says she loves the fungus photos. Thank you. All right, so now for the bugs. Along the trail, especially around the junction, I began to notice several species of insect, including an insect in the Pisogaster genus, which is pictured there on the right, uh, a blue-tipped dancer, damselfly, my first ever sighting of a cicada, which I know is really pathetic. I've never seen one, but I, I haven't <laughs> until recently, a monarch butterfly, and a meadow hawk dragonfly. So in all, my uncle and I found 22 birds on this visit, which was an improvement from my first trip out to the rookery. And so here is a blue-tipped dancer on the left. And it's a really bad picture of the cicada, but I was excited because it's my first ever one that I've seen, let alone photographed. Um, so, and I'm surprised I actually got as much of it as I did in the photo being the release in front of it. And then a monarch butterfly on the left and a meadow hawk on the right at the rookery. And here's my bird list, uh, 26 species total. Uh, notable species that, that I felt were notable, Belted Kingfisher, the Eastern Phoebe, Red Eye Vireo, Cedar Waxwing, Indigo Bunting, and American Red Start. All right, now that brings us to Sean's visit. Uh, Sean saw 16 species and visited the park three times. Uh, so the dates visited August 8th, 15th, and 21st. Uh, he says, the rookery is a hidden gem seemingly in the middle of nowhere. Many times this can actually enhance the experience since the wildlife is not subjected to the same stresses as they would be if the park was located within city limits. Despite the middle of nowhere feeling, this park isn't too far from civilization. Before this virtual field trip, I had visited this park once before, but not for birding. I was only familiar with its location and the main building in the back of the lot, the Great Blue Heron Lodge. So I was anxious to get out and explore everything. The rookery had to offer. I started each trip off with a lap around the Woodcock Trail, which I picked up from the Great Blue Heron Lodge. This trail was only about a half mile, but it was filled with lots of wonderful scenery. From the observation deck to the forest and the part of the path that led through the wildflowers, there was no shortage of beauty to enjoy. In the forest area, the first bird I spotted was a house wren. This tiny bird was perched on a dead tree and moved to the trunk before I could get my camera positioned for the shot. It practically blended right in with the trunk, and I was lucky to get the shots I did. Wrens are fascinating little birds, and I always enjoy seeing them. And there on the right-hand side, picture of that cute little house wren at the rookery by Sean Missig. 
Next, I ran into a fledgling eastern bluebird that was a little friendlier than the adult bluebirds. It really did not mind me taking pictures of it and even flew a little closer to me at one point. Despite all the luck I was having so far, the mosquitoes finally found me and almost took me prisoner. However, I continued my journey up the trail to see what else I could find. The wildflower area of the path offered up many different bees, butterflies, and insects that were all busy foraging on the pollen that was available. After I completed the Woodcock Trail, I connected to the Interurban Trail. And there on the left, photo of an eastern bluebird at the rookery by Sean Sig. I started the Interurban Trail by heading to the right of the sign and found the wetland area. This area would be the most productive for me, and I spent most of my time here during each of my visits. On my first visit, I immediately spotted the target species, Eastern Phoebe, and began to take pictures. There were many Phoebe flying around, as well as perched on down trees and branches. I hit the Phoebe jackpot for sure. As much fun as I was having, I did search the area for other species. On the other side of the wetland, I did find a great blue heron who had caught a catfish and was attempting to eat it. At one point, I think I noticed. At one point, I think it noticed me, and it flew to another area nearby to consume its meal. I also spotted many turtles sunning themselves on the logs within the water. And a photo of an eastern Phoebe there on the right-hand side at the rookery by Sean Hissig. We have another eastern Phoebe on the left and the great blue heron on the right at the rookery by Sean. On my second visit, 8.15, I was greeted by a green heron that was perched in a tree. Normally when I see green herons, they are much lower to the water, so this was a pleasant surprise. It did not seem to be bothered by my presence, and I snapped a few shots before it eventually flew off. This wasn't the only surprise. The rookery had in store for me, though. As I looked across the wetland again, this time I found a sharp shin hawk sitting in a tree. This bird did not have a care in the world, and I was able to get many shots from many different vantage points before it eventually took off and left the area. Eastern Phoebe were again very prevalent in the area, and I was able to get a few more shots of them as well. Oh, it looks like I forgot to update that that title. <laughs> I always make one mistake. Um, this is a green heron at uh, the Rookery by Sean Missig. All right, and then um, here are pictures of the sharp shin hawk at the Rookery. Now, um, there's always debate between juvenile coopers and juvenile um, sharp shin hawks. I kind of think this looks more like a coopers, but they're so close, and these debates that I see on Facebook are between experts who can't seem to agree. Um, Nancy, I don't know if you want to take a look at this and, and tell me if you see any field marks on here that make it a coop or a sharp shin. Yeah, I was sticking my face against the screen, trying to, <laughs> trying to get a slightly larger uh, view. It's hard to tell the size, because um, I don't know the size of the tree and the, and the branch. Um, boy, that's a, that's a tough one. I, yeah. I'm not going to call it, but okay. But yeah. Um, we'll a sharp, with a Sharpie. A Sharpie would be awesome. Yeah. All I right, think, we'll stick I, with I, that. I think, I think probably Sean is looking at that squared tail. And that that's a, a good possibility. So, but I wish I could see things a little closer. Yeah. All right. Thank you for that input. All right. So, uh, my final visit, 821, started off with a rare species I have found a few times before. Tom Fishburn was there, and I saw him on the Woodcock Trail. This would prove to be a sign of good luck for me. I spotted a morning dove, and I was able to get a good shot of it. Normally, I'm not able to get great shots of these birds, so I was happy to find this one hiding in a tree. I then spotted a cedar waxwing perched within some dead trees, and it stayed long enough to get some shots of it. The wildflower area was also very busy again, and the lighting was great, too. I met back up with Tom at the wetland area, and he had spotted some ducks off in the distance sitting on a log. We also spotted many Phoebe along the way, too. As I was leaving, I spotted the second of her species of my trip, Michelle Burgess, was there too. We discussed the location. I might have told her that there was a ton of Phoebe flying around. I think you did. I was very excited. All right, she picked a great target species for this location, and hopefully she was able to capture them. And no, I did not actually see any Phoebe on that visit. You must have seen them all, <laughs> and then they went away. 
All right, it's always, a, it's always nice to run into fellow birders on these virtual field trips. It really gives me a sense of community and belonging that I have not found before. Most importantly, though, we get to see the world through someone else's eyes. Even if we're there at the same time, we all come back with something completely different and completely our own. Thank you to everyone for sharing these moments. And here is Sean's bird list. Uh, notable species, the eastern Phoebe, eastern bluebird, green heron, uh, and the cedar waxwing. And then a beautiful picture of that cedar waxwing at the rookery by Sean Lissig. All right, next up is Tom. Tom, do you want to take it or do you want me to read it? I'll go ahead and, and read it. Um, okay. Yeah, thanks, Sean. I always love seeing the cedar waxwings. Um, but yeah, I, I got to uh, the rookery just on the morning of August 21st, just the one time. And um, it was the first time I got to, to visit the park and was uh, was pretty impressed. I walked a couple of the trails, um, but I heard about the wetlands and my focus was to get down to the wetlands. Um, I also enjoyed the, the wildflowers and, and discovering uh, some of the history of the Cleveland and Eastern Interurban Railway, which I uh, kind of investigated uh, when I got back home, when I uh, was curious about what that was about. And uh, the birds I saw included wood ducks and North Goldfinch, Eastern Phoebes, uh, one great blue heron, and, uh, and a very intense hunting green heron. Um, so I didn't see a lot of birds, but it was still a nice uh, couple hours visit there. I heard the green heron as, it, uh, as I approached the wetlands along the interurban trail. When I found it, it was leaning over the, the green duckweed covered marsh from a, from a low branch. And the heron was looking intent in, into the water. Um, so I waited and watched a few minutes, uh, wondering whether it would find something. Um, and as typical, it was uh, mostly still shifting position, you know, just a little as it peered down, uh, looking for a snack of some kind. I saw it take a stab eventually. Uh, but wasn't sure really if it grabbed anything or not. I, I might have thought I saw a little something, but the, my pictures didn't prove anything. On the woodpecker trail, I did enjoy finding a couple wild wildflowers that um, I usually hope to see in the summer. Summertime, you know, there's uh, uh, several different types of wildflowers I, I hope to come across, and I found a couple of them there. So next slide. Um, yeah, the ironweed is all over the place in wingstem these days, and that's that's uh, um, not really unusual at all. But I, I took a stab at a picture of a of that there, and then the bridge crossing over down towards the um, interurban trail, the way the way I got there. Uh, next slide. Now, there's uh, yeah, I took a snap of that. Uh, in the urban trail sign, and then the, the trail with the, that looks so much like a tunnel where the uh, trolleys trug through. Um, I grew up in Philadelphia, where I used to always take trolleys to uh, to, to uh, high school and college. So uh, I'm fond of trolleys. And there's the the green heron um, that was on the uh, the one side of the the trail there, looking down in, into the into the wetlands. Next slide. A couple more pictures of the heron as it uh, looking down very intently and then just before it, it took a stab with its mouth open there. Next slide. And when it came back up, you know, like I said, I couldn't see if it found anything or not, but uh, it was fun to see that Bird so intently looking down, and then finished up, and the uh, wings pulled just uh, all over the place there, and it stayed just a little bit longer, and it left, and uh, I went on my way as well. Okay, what you got? Anything left? Uh, I got some wood ducks on the left-hand side that we I saw there. Uh, yeah, the one on the right, I think they're both males. The one on the right for sure. And, um, and Sean, that's, I was with Sean at that time. We were looking, and they were hunkered down for the most most part of the time. Um, and then finally, they kind of stood up a little bit before they wandered off. 
I was taking a bunch of pictures and finally uh, got that one, which is one of the last ones. And the the Phoebe's I saw, I saw some you know flying around here and there, but then um, that one a bit distant is my uh, my Phoebe picture I submitted. Next slide, if any. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there's some of the the blue lobelia, great blue lobelia. Uh, it looks like on the left hand side it's just starting to grow, and then I got a closer shot because the, uh, uh, the the flowers there, the the striping of it, and the hairs to it is is pretty pretty interesting to see. And then the rattlesnake master, um, they, they are they're in the uh, plant as well, you know, particularly when you look at them close like that. So uh, yeah, I enjoyed my my time at the, at the Brooklyn. Anything else, Michelle? I think it's yours now. I bet. Yeah, I think that's it. Nancy says that she um, she loves this slide, the um, the great blue labelia and the rattlesnake oh, master. Yeah. And I, I do I do love this slide as well. All right, yeah, and that's it. <laughs> so a big thank you to Sean Mizig and Tom Fishburn for participating, going to the location, and you know sending me something of your experience so I can make this presentation. And a big thank you to the Geauga Park District for the rookery. I put the address there. Um, I, I put in my GPS, took me right where I needed to be really easy to find and please visit wcaudubon.org for more virtual field trip opportunities of this month the month of september the virtual field trip is at the headlands dune state nature preserve in search of fall warblers so i know sean's already been out there i've been out there um i think i saw one warbler when i went uh so that the migration is is just starting so hopefully a little later in the month we'll, we'll get more warblers on our species list. And then uh, Belta Kingfisher at the Rookery for the image there. So now I would like to open it up for discussion. Um, Nancy, uh, when I came back from the little hiatus with my application quitting, um, Tom and I had a discussion about this Belta Kingfisher and wondering if it is male or female. And I'll tell you why. Um, I know that males tend to have just the, the breast band and then females also have a belly band but there's also this little brown right here which has me confused is this going to become a belly band because it's a juvenile or is this a male where this brown spot will go away do you happen to have any insight oh huh. that's a good question um i don't i i have not really looked at juvenile juvenile uh, king uh, kingfishers before and i okay learned that ID tip that you had on this one slide about the rusty breast band. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's cool. Okay. Uh, Excellent. I'll, I'll, keep have look, I'll have to look I'll have to look uh, some information up. Okay. I, I googled it and I just couldn't find it. Uh -huh. um, I, I didn't spend a whole lot of time on it, but we'll see if we can find it and maybe I'll give a quick update next virtual field trip on what this bird is. Yeah, I was a, wasn't able to get out to the rookery. Um, I don't know where August went. It, it um, yeah. Like, did we really have an August? I, I just don't get it. Well, but, Nancy, um, you avoided another mosquito-ridden thing, <laughs> <laughs> so don't don't be too sad about it. <laughs> well, it took Sean prisoners, or they took yeah. Sean prisoner. You know, it's like like the Lilliputians probably had him tied down. <laughs> Yeah, uh, they basically did. They came from every inch of that park and swarmed around me the entire trip, every trip. I tried walking the trail past the covered bridge, and I could not get very far and had to turn back. It, it was bad. Wow. Well, and, and those who are going out to uh, mentor Headlands, um, if you – when you go into the parking lot, you know, it's a very large parking lot, go to the far east, eastern end of the parking lot, mm -hmm. and there's a trail there, and the, the shrubs and stuff uh, there tend to have the warblers in it. Um, then they have the shorebirds, of course, along the shore. So I don't know. Is that where you went, Michelle? Did you get to that far, far yeah. East, yeah. East so yeah, when you pull in, take a right and go all the way down as far as I go, like Nancy said, um, 
and then there's a couple different trails. There's there's one that kind of looks more like a main trail that kind of takes you into, um, I don't know, like a field or something, like grassland area, and then to the beach. Uh, but yeah, if you take a trail to the right, um, you'll get into that shrubby area, and that's where the warp, where I have good luck seeing warblers um, in the spring. I was there, and then I'm hoping that they they stop there on the, their way back south. So. Yeah, and there's actually a driveway that ends with a, a fence, and I know some people kind of go through the vegetation to get walk on that drive, and I don't know who that drive belongs to. Maybe the the industry that's right next to it, um, but you know uh, nobody's ever bothered me there. Mm -hmm. You know, saying get out of here. Um, so that that could be a, a good area too. Cool. Yeah, it's used all the time by by a lot of people. It's the Coast Guard Drive. It's the drive up to the Coast Guard area. And, um, oh, but it's, but there's a but there's a, a a fence at the end that's always closed. I mean, it's a, like a, a driveway to nowhere. Well, that's 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 that, that's just the barrier between the road um, and the, um, the state park preserve area. Um, yeah. But um, so that that is that's the few vehicles out. That's, okay. It's, it's no issue for people to walk around that fence. There's little chains there too to climb over. It's, I mean, you could walk, you could drive in that way. You could walk in that from the road. Mm -hmm. That's way out of the way. Yeah. That's that's nothing to be concerned about. It's well worth checking that road out. Yeah. I'll have to find it. I don't think I've I've seen that. I I do walk through the shrub area. Those those little trails. Um, and then, yeah. you know, make my way to the break wall and kind of walk down the break wall a little bit. And then so I start, then I circled yep. back to yep. the, the beach. That's yep. kind of what I did. I'll yeah, have to look you hit, that yeah, road. You, hit the, you hit the right area, too, okay. uh, Michelle, those, those shrubby areas mm -hmm. um, on those sandy trails. That road is uh, really good for a lot. I've checked it out a few times, and I actually saw the fox on that road a couple of oh, times as well. Oh, you saw the fox. Oh, that's exciting. Did you see yeah, it when you went this past time, or was this previous trip? No, no, it was uh, it was later last year. So it was around okay. this time, but it was last year. Um, but there is a fox, and I believe there was supposed to be a couple young ones, but I never saw any of them, so I don't know if they're still around. Well, it is your mission to get a picture of a fox for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to see what I can do because I, I would like to because when I went, I was not able to get any pictures. So I I, I definitely need one of those for my collection. Ah, uh, okay. Was that just before you were you were in the photography or, or if it was last year? Uh, no, you were, you were doing photography was, last year this time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I started first of the year 2020. So okay. it, it was about eight months in, nine months in. Okay. Maybe you've got some better lenses and stuff now, so. And skill. Like, I know that, like, a year ago, like, my skill has improved just from practice. Oh, I think everybody's sure. photos yeah. are. So Thank I'm, you, Nancy. I'm enjoying them. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to be able to make it out to Headland soon? I'm hoping Nancy. so, yeah. Okay. I'm hoping so. I just, I'm trying to wait for a, a cool front to move the birds down. Yeah. Um, so hopefully okay. I can get out there. I have a vacation coming up end of September. I'll be in Cabo, San Lucas, so I'm hoping to be able to make one more trip out to June before I go. Um, and then I'll be, wow. uh, yeah, so I, I actually signed up for a, um, a birding tour. There's a company called Birding Los Cabos, and they're going to take me for a morning to see hummingbirds and endemic species. I'm really mm. excited about that. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be my first time traveling with my camera. I'm a little nervous, but I'm going to do it. I definitely, it'll be a carry-on. <laughs> All right, so any, um, any other comments or thoughts about the rookery? I do want to mention um, that Coe Lake is drawn down. Um, and it might be worth it checking out for shorebirds. Oh. Oh, okay. Excellent. Uh, a friend of mine um, today uh, passed on a picture uh, to me of what I believe was a solitary sandpiper. Pretty common, but 
Um, might where's the, where's the, um, are there mud flats exposed? Well, I'm not real sure if it, you know, I think he was saying that the, the water was getting crummy there and he think that's why they drew it down. But uh, there's a lot of rocks, you know, and dirt, I guess, combination. Um, I know there's mud on the um, south side because they had it drawn down early um, or late last winter for a while. Oh, yeah. So I know there's mud down that way. So okay. I'm, I'm curious. I just found out about it today. I drove by and I saw it was down and then my friend contacted me. So I hope to get over there. Tom, do so you know, you, did they fix that wall yet? Well, temporarily, they, they, the, 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 um, uh, kind of the, the dike that broke there that was le was causing the problems of leaking. Uh, they did an emergency repair, uh, is what I understand. Um, but it's still kind of low, uh, but it's, but it's okay. But I think the intention is to do a much better repair in the future when they have the money. Kolik is always fun. My kids love the, the playground over there. So usually like we'll go with a family and I'll just leave my husband and kids at the playground and walk the lake, look for birds. I want to ride those rides at the playground. But I know. I don't think they allow me on there. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you could sneak on. They probably have cameras. Who is you, this? Yeah. <laughs> If you go early enough uh, on a weekday, I think you could probably get away with it. <laughs> Have you done it, Sean? You, you're speaking from experience, no. right? <laughs> uh, I, I, I wish I could say I was. I mean, I do want to get on the playground. I'm not going to lie. It looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, Way I, different from the playground I, I remember. Yeah, for sure. And when I, when I was growing up, the playground would kill you. <laughs> You was safe. <laughs> Played at your own room. Yeah, those metal, those metal yeah. slides that were a thousand degrees. Oh my gosh! Up, they were yeah. great. Well, and all the playground stuff was. I mean, it was on asphalt. We never had the soft, you know, either the yeah. chips. It was that like asphalt. So you know, you come down the slide and you're like, ah, not only did you get burned, but then you get scraped up. Burn and, yeah, scraped <laughs> up. And, fall off the swing set and you get scraped up and bust everything so that's, that's what made fun. them love that's, fun. That that's right yeah. none of these mamby pamby kids <laughs> well, I thank everybody again for your uh, attending for going out and the, the lovely photos I, I really appreciate that all right, yes, and thank you everyone for calling in tonight and for going out to the location and providing me these wonderful images and journaling. I really appreciate it and looking forward to next month. All right, so all my have a good night, on. everyone. Yes. <laughs> good night, everybody.